I want to talk a little bit about trigonometry very, very briefly, enough for you to be able to get through, I believe, sections one, four, and one, five in the Achieve homework. Um, when you take tests with me, you're going to get an algebra and trig help sheet. This is the trig help sheet you're going to get. It's actually uh, in the uh, e-textbook in the, um, if you go into the e-textbook, I think it's extra materials or, um, you know, help help sheets or something like that. But this is, um, you know, information. It has, you know, review of angle measurement, your right triangle defini definitions, if you remember Sukatoa or however you remembered it in terms of defining sine, cosine, etc. Uh, and then of course the functions defined as a point on the unit circle and the unit circle itself, you should know how to find the exact value of sine, cosine, tangent, etc. for all of these special angles in here. Um, we have the fundamental identities uh, and then more identities here. And you have the graphs of the trig functions here. So you'll have all those things. Um, I've kind of blown up the uh, unit circle uh, on this. Actually, someone else did it for me, just so we can see um, all the values. And if you remember, if I were to draw, say, a um, angle, right, with the initial side coinciding with the positive x-axis, and let's say the terminal side, um, let me grab a little ruler here. Let's say the terminal side goes through this point right here, right? And so we're talking about an, uh, this angle here, we'll call that angle theta, All right? Then what we know is we could form this uh, right triangle by dropping down a line uh, perpendicular to the x-axis here, All right? And of course, then, uh, this, of course, you're given the coordinates of this point, which is on a unit circle. Uh, the unit circle has a radius of one. So this hypotenuse of this right triangle, that's the radius of the circle. That length is one equal to one. And this point, how do we get the one half comma square root of three over two? Well, remember, this is the um, x and y coordinates of this point. So, so the x coordinate is simply this distance here, right? And the y coordinate is going to be this distance here. And if you remember the, as I mentioned just a little while ago, the Sukkotoa, or however you remember it, right? This says the sine is the opposite of our hypotenuse. So sine of this angle, sine of theta, is opposite y over 1. Well, y divided by 1 is just y. So the sine of theta is equal to y. Okay, now in this case, this angle theta is 60 degrees. And from that, you can actually construct and know the relationship between these three sides. And from that relationship, you will know that the sine of 60 degrees is always going to be uh, equal to the square root of three over two. And so this y coordinate here, right, sine of theta is y. This y coordinate is the sine of this angle which we write here, 60 degrees. It's really this angle in degree. Uh, remember, 60 degrees, if we convert it to radians, is pi over 3 radians. Remember, going all the way around a circle is 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. So 60 degrees would be 1 sixth of the way around, and 1 sixth of 2 pi. 1 sixth of 2 pi is 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3. All right. So that's the y coordinate. That's the sine. And then the cosine of theta is going to be adjacent, right? Cosine here is adjacent A over hypotenuse, so X over one. So cosine theta is X, and it turns out in this configuration, the X coordinate is, is one half. So you should have gone through the exercise in pre-calculus of finding all these ordered pairs by drawing the special triangles, et cetera, et cetera. But you have the unit circle, so automatically you know what the sine and cosine are. How do you get the remaining trig identities? Well, we know that the tangent of theta is the sine theta over cosine theta. So in terms of the unit circle, it's just going to be y over x, right? And then uh, the secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So it's going to be 
one over x. Of course, here we've got r. This is an arbitrary circle of radius r. If the radius indeed is one, then you just have a one there. Uh, cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine, and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So, for example, if I ask for what is the sine, cosine, and tangent of 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, well, on the unit circle, we see 5 pi over 6 over here. So that now would be an angle, uh, if you think about it, that is obtuse, more than 90 degrees. But we can see the x-coordinate of this point on the unit circle is negative square root of 3 over 2, and the y-coordinate is 1 half. The y-coordinate is 1 half. That tells me right away that sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. All right, sine of 5 pi over 6 is going to be equal to 1 half. And the cosine is the x-coordinate, negative square root of 3 over 2. Well, what's tangent? Well, remember we just said tangent is uh, sine divided by cosine, right? Which is y one half, right? The, the y coordinate one half divided by the x coordinate, right? And we could do the math here. Remember when you're dividing by a fraction, you uh, invert and multiply, right? Multiply by the reciprocal. The twos cancel and you're left with this, negative one over the square root of three. That's the answer. A lot of times uh, in, in the form, they want you to rationalize the, uh, denominator. And if that's the case, you should know how to rationalize by multiply numerator and denominator by the square root of three. And we get in the bottom three. So it's now a um, rational number down there. So this is equivalent to this. A lot of times they're looking for this form. So be careful about this. I'm okay with this in most contexts, but sometimes it's more convenient to use this form if you're going to you know, proceed to use this value in a further calculation. Cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine, so one divided by a half is just two. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so the reciprocal of negative square root of three over two is negative two over square root of three. Again, this is a fine form, but they might want it rationalized. In that case, this is the form. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. I use this form because it's easy. The reciprocal of this is just going to be negative the square root of three. So you should be able to find the sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent for all our special angles, which would be any uh, of these in the unit circle or any, again, remember, we, we can go all the way around and be right back here. So if I wrap the angle, go all the way around, say, 360 degrees and go another 60 degrees, which would be what, a total of 420 degrees? Well, the cosine of 420 degrees is a half. It's the same value, right? It's the periodic nature of these trig functions. Okay. So you should be able to, to do that sort of thing. Now, uh, also you should be familiar with the inverse trig functions. I've sort of summarized the three most important ones, the inverse sine function or arc sine function, inverse cosine or arc cosine, inverse tangent or arc tangent. This negative one X uh, looks like an exponent is not an exponent. This is not sine of x to the negative one power, which would be one over sine of x, which would be cosecant x. That's not what this is. This is the inverse function. It's undoes, right, the sine function. So for instance, if sine of five pi over six is, well, that's not a good example. Let me do this one. If cosine of five pi over six is negative square root of three over two, then the inverse cosine of negative square root of three over two is five pi over six. It goes back, cancels out, if you will. But there is some restrictions. And the reason I didn't use <laughs> the one for sine is the domain and range for these functions are um, created uh, in order to make the sine function, well, the domains are created in order to make the sine function one to one. So if we look at the graph at the bottom here, you can see the graph of the sine function. It's not one to one because it keeps uh, hitting the value, say, one over and over again. It's at pi over two, it's one. At uh, five pi over two, it's one and so on. Right? It just keeps, keeps uh, hitting one infinite number of times. So what we do is we restrict it just on this domain from negative pi over two to pi over two. Here, this portion right here of the sine function is one to one. So we define the inverse sine function based on that. Um, because the domain here is negative pi over two to pi over two uh, for the sine function. Oh, I got these, these backwards, excuse me. I was writing this out and I did it backwards. And then I made mistakes down here too. So the, the domain is of course negative one to one 
for the inverse sine function because that's the same as the range of our output, right? That's always true for the sine function between negative one and one. But we restricted the domain here between negative pi over two and pi over two. So that is now the range of the inverse sine function. For the cosine function, we restrict the domain from zero to pi. So we're looking at just this portion here. And because of that, the uh, range of the uh, inverse cosine function is zero to pi. Domain is still negative one to one like sine. Now the tangent function, its inverse, notice we have to restrict it between negative pi over two and pi over two. There's vertical asymptotes at those locations, if you remember. And so that is the uh, range of the uh, inverse tangent function. Now its domain's all real numbers because the range of the tangent function's all real numbers as we have these vertical asymptotes as we approach pi over two from the uh, left-hand side, we're going to infinity. And as we approach negative pi over two from the right-hand side, we're going to negative infinity. So with that, um, you should be able to answer questions, including using the unit circle, uh, such as this. Find all the angles theta in the interval from zero to two pi, such that tangent theta is equal to the square root of three. Well, that's just, going back, where, where is the tangent theta equal to the square root of three? Um, well, it's positive, first of all. Remember, tangent is sine divided by cosine. So it's going to be positive up here because both sine and cosine, the x and y coordinates are both positive. It's also going to be positive down here where they're both negative, right? Because a negative divided by negative is equal to a positive. So which one gives us the square root of three when I divide the y coordinate by the x coordinate right here, right? Square root of three over two divided by half is the square root of three. So tangent of 60 degrees is equal to the square root of three, okay? Or tangent of pi over three. And of course we're wanting in the interval from zero to two pi, so we're wanting radians. So we have theta is pi over three. Is that the only value? No, we also know there in the third quadrant, right? First quadrant is positive tangent's positive, also down here in the third quadrant, it's positive. And in fact, we see that's gonna happen right here because this y coordinate, negative square root of three over two, divided by negative one half, gives me a positive square root of three. So the tangent is equal to square root of three, also at four pi over three. What about in the inverse sine? The inverse sine, well, keep in mind our ranges that we talked about for those. All right, so the range has to be between negative pi over two and pi over two. So where is the sine equal to one? Where's the y coordinate equal to one? The y coordinate is equal to one there, right? Where we're at pi over two, okay? So sine inverse of one is pi over two. And that pi over two is D indeed in this interval, okay? What about negative square root of two over two? Where is sine negative square root of two over two? Well, the Y coordinate is positive in the first and the second quadrant. So it's negative down here. Now, if you come over here, uh, the Y coordinate is negative here. So could the answer be five pi over four? Certainly sine of five pi over four is negative square root of two over two, but the inverse sine is not equal. The inverse sine of square, negative square root of two over two is not five pi over four because five pi over four is not in this interval. So really when we're talking about the inverse sine function, we're talking about values from really negative pi over two. So 11 pi over six is the same as uh, negative pi over six. In other words, not the same, but the value of the sine and cosine of negative pi over six is the same. Because if I take 11 pi over six and subtract two pi, I'm at negative pi over six, right? Uh, we think of rotations in the clockwise sense as being negative. This will be negative pi over four, this will be negative pi over three, and this will be negative pi over two. And so really the answer we're looking for, when is sine inverse equal to negative square root of two over two, it's not seven pi over four, it's not five pi over four because those values are not in that original range, right? That we talked about. It is actually negative um, pi over four. So that's the tricky thing about the inverse sine function.
Now cosine, its uh, range is from zero to pi. So whereas inverse sine is sort of the fourth and uh, first quadrants, the tangent is first and second quadrants. And that makes it pretty easy to find because the x coordinates are positive over here and negative over here. And that's all we have to worry about. So if I take the inverse cosine of negative one half, the x coordinate is negative one half right here. So the answer is two pi over three. Where is the x coordinate zero? The x coordinate is zero is right here at pi over two. What about when is tangent inverse equal to negative one? Well, we just talked about up, up above where, where was tangent inverse or tangent equal to square root of three. Well, where is it equal to negative one? Well, it's gonna be negative in one of these two quadrants, but remember the tangent inverse function like the uh, sine inverse function has a range from negative pi over two to pi over two. We don't include, notice these are parentheses as opposed to brackets because right, the original tangent function had those uh, vertical asymptotes at pi over two and negative pi over two. So we don't include those, but anything in between there. So I can't include, um, say, um, anything down any of these values here down in the, in the third quadrant. So I've got to use from negative pi over two up to positive pi over two. Obviously, since it's negative, we're down here. So where is the tangent equal to negative? Um, let me get that problem. Where do we say it was? square root of three, negative one, sorry, negative one. Well, obviously that's when uh, we're right here, right? The y is negative square root of two over two, the x is square root of two over two. So sine, cosine, dividing sine by cosine gives me negative one. So the tangent inverse of negative one is equal to negative pi over four. Tangent inverse of zero. So where is tangent equal to zero? Uh, when the sine is zero, and the cosine is one. Zero divided by one is zero. And so we're at zero radians here. Tangent inverse of zero is equal to zero. Okay, So you should be able to use the unit circle to, to do problems like this. Of course, that leads to really solving trig equations. And that's really what we want you to be able to do very well in here. So just a couple of these real quick. Suppose I want to um, solve this equation on this interval. Well, I need to find out what cosine of x is equal to. So I'm going to add one and I'm going to divide by two. We see cosine of x is a half. And now we're going back to our unit circle. When is the x coordinate equal to a half? We know it's equal to a half here at pi over three. And this is on the interval notice from zero to two pi. So going from zero all the way around two pi. So now we are going to use these five, 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 or three, seven, five, or four, 11, five, or six values. Of course, we're looking for when x coordinate is one half. That, of course, occurs at five, five, or three. So notice the same x coordinate vertically there. These two points are right on top of each other, pi over three and five, five, or three. Those are the solutions. Um, Now there's, there's infinitely many solutions, but just on this interval, it's just these two, right? So in general, if I just said, you know, solve this equation here, the answer would be pi over three plus any multiple of two pi or five pi over three plus any multiple of two pi. What about something like this? Well, here I've got tangent squared X. Remember this means tangent of X squared. So to solve for tangent of x, I take the square root, but you have to remember when I take the square root, I have to include both the positive and negative roots. So we're actually looking at when is tangent x equal to positive or negative square root of three. Okay. So if I go to the unit circle, we, we already talked about this a minute ago, when is tangent x equal to square root of three? That was at pi over three, right? Sine square root of three over two divided by cosine of half y divided by x, that's square root of three. So tangent of, of pi over three, but so is what tangent of four pi over three, negative divided by negative is positive. So we know those two values, but it's also where it's negative square root of three. Well, that's gonna occur up here at two pi over three, because we'll have positive divided by negative. This will be negative square root of three. And then the same thing uh, down here at five pi over three, right? In fact, all the, you know, 
pi over three, two pi over three, four pi over three, five pi over three, all those same over three fractions, if you will, will be solutions to where the tangent is either positive or negative, the square root of three. Okay. One last one to look at. Again, that's just on the interval from zero up to, but not including two pi. Thought I'd put in a little advanced one. What about this one? You say, well, there's two trig functions. Huh? What are we going to do here? Well, this one here should kind of uh, ring a bell, I hope, with a specific uh, formula from uh, the trig uh, or trig identities, the double angle, so-called double angle formulas for sine, cosine, tangent. Hopefully you remember those from trig. This, this one, they, they come up from time to time, especially as a sine of 2x, which is not, it's not two times sine of x. Can't just, can't just pull that two out because remember it's not sine times 2x, it's sine of 2x. But sine of 2x can be shown to be two sine of x cosine of x. Basically, you can write sine of 2x as sine of x plus x and come up here and use the addition formula for sine to, to get to prove this sine of 2x formula. So, so going back over here, this is two sine of x cosine of x. And now I can factor, there's a cosine of x factor here and a cosine x factor here. So I can factor those out, leaving me two sine of x plus one. And I have a product of two things equal to zero. One of those two things has to be zero, either cosine of x is zero or two sine of x plus one is zero. Of course, two sine of x plus one is zero when sine of x is subtracting one and dividing by two, negative one half. So on the unit circle, if we go to the unit circle, I'm just going to draw a representation of it. When is cosine of x equal to zero? When is the x coordinate equal to zero? Well, we know that occurs at up when the x coordinate is zero on the y-axis up here, which is pi over two, right? 90 degrees or pi over two. And then down here at three pi over two. Again, I'm gonna solve this, I should have said, on the interval from zero to two pi. Okay, those are the two values here. Here, where is sine of x equal to negative one half. Well, let's just go back to the, the unit circle. We can see that, of course, sine of x is positive one half, right? The y coordinate is a half at pi over six, but we want it to be negative. So it's positive here and here at pi over six and five pi over six. It's negative here and here at seven pi over six and 11 pi over six. So I'd like to just draw, you know, sort of at uh, uh, seven pi over six, it's negative one half, right? The y value here is negative one half. And over here at uh, 11 pi over six, whoops, 11 pi over six. And so our solution is these four just on the interval from zero to two pi. So x is equal to uh, in order going increasing pi over two, seven pi over six, three pi over two and 11 pi over six. This is very, 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 very brief review of trigonometry. There's a lot to trigonometry. Uh, you need to keep working at, you know, making sure you understand how to solve these basic trigonometric equations. We do encounter them and dealing with the trig functions themselves. So um, this should be good enough to get you going. But of course, if you have questions, uh, please uh, contact me uh, for help.